Cervical stenosis is very common to see on an MRI of the cervical spine. As a spine surgeon, I see a lot of patients who have cervical stenosis on an MRI, and it's not uncommon for them to say that either they've read online or they've been told by somebody that they need spine surgery, because if they don't have a spinal decompression, that they could fall or be in an accident and be paralyzed. Most academic spine surgeons will tell you that this is a myth, and in this video, we're gonna talk more about why. Cervical stenosis is really common. On a simple level, cervical stenosis is narrowing of the spinal canal with compression of the spinal cord or narrowing around the spinal cord. If you haven't seen my video on cervical stenosis or cervical spondylosis, I'd really recommend that you see that and you'll have a better understanding with pictures of what cervical stenosis really is and what types there are and where it happens. Having said that, if you've seen that video and you understand what cervical stenosis is, it sounds kind of scary. It sounds like you have narrowing around your spinal cord and maybe there's some significant risks with that. Certainly I've seen a lot of patients who come into the office and say that they have been told or read or believe that they need surgery because they have cervical stenosis. Now it is very common for people to have stenosis with no symptoms. The general statistics favor that if you have cervical stenosis, one out of three people will become symptomatic. So how to treat cervical stenosis that is symptomatic is a totally different discussion and we do have videos talking about the management of cervical stenosis. But this video is really meant to kind of explore what do you do if you have cervical stenosis on an MRI but no real symptoms, no real findings from it, how do you manage that? Maybe you have gotten imaging of your cervical spine looking for something else and there's a report saying you have cervical stenosis. The symptoms that matter from cervical stenosis are the symptoms of spinal cord dysfunction. So those symptoms are problems like clumsiness or balance dysfunction, difficulty with dexterity, not necessarily pain. And we cover that in much greater detail in a full video that covers symptoms of cervical spondylosis. If you do not have those symptoms though, maybe you just have an MRI that shows narrowing around the spinal cord, then surgery is usually not advisable for it. And I say that because Although yes, it is conceivable that people can trip and fall when they have cervical stenosis, and yes, it's conceivable that they could be paralyzed by that, you certainly don't need cervical stenosis to be paralyzed by a car accident or by a fall. And we see a lot of injuries at the institution that I'm at, and you know, rarely do those people have cervical stenosis going into it. It's just really unfortunate when people have a spinal cord injury. But people with cervical stenosis are not really at a higher risk of developing a spinal cord injury. And that has been explored even in a football population where they're taking much more abuse than the average person might take. Cervical stenosis unto itself doesn't necessarily predispose you to having an injury. If you were to fall, you're probably at comparable risk if you have stenosis. And what I cannot say is that if we did surgery and decompressed your spinal cord, that you're suddenly immune to injury to your spinal cord from a fall or a car accident or something else. As a consequence, when people don't have symptoms, we generally recommend not proceeding with surgery for that. Certainly if you develop symptoms, which we talk about when I see patients with cervical stenosis that's asymptomatic, we will talk about the symptoms of myelopathy and the things to look for. And if you develop those, sure, see a surgeon, consider surgery for it. But if you don't have symptoms, for a variety of reasons, surgery is not advisable. Number one, surgery doesn't protect you from future falls and future injuries. Number two, surgery carries its own risks. So although paralysis is an exceedingly small risk with surgery, it's not zero, uh, but neither is getting in an accident, right? The risk is exceedingly small that you're gonna get in an accident and be paralyzed from it. So you're really managing very small statistics. And it's tough to compare them and try to figure out what's better. As a general rule, when I see patients who've been told like you need surgery because you have stenosis, if they don't have findings on their exam of cervical spinal cord dysfunction, and they don't have symptoms of cervical myelopathy, then I usually don't recommend surgery for it. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about this specific video or any other questions that you'd like to see me answer, please leave them in the comments section below. If you have uh, any interest in seeing upcoming videos or if you've enjoyed this content, please click like or subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in videos coming soon.